Hello and welcome to 4000 Counting. I'm Watty and today I am joined by Sheffield Steel Dogs, Mr. Tate Shudra. Tate, um, awesome to chat to you. Obviously, I've been watching yourself and your brother since you were kids. I used to compete against your dad back in the day. And it's nice to see you boys like take that leap from junior to senior so effortlessly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been good. Have you enjoyed getting in amongst that senior hockey though? Because let's face it, UK hockey for juniors is pretty fucking shite. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. Uh, it's no fault of our own, mate. No fault of our own. But there's lack of competition. So for you guys that are dominating at that lower level, how nice is it for you to step up and actually test yourself against guys that you know that are going to make you work every night? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's it's challenging being a. Uh... All the way up there, getting straight in. Uh, sort of uh, weaseled my way in a little bit, starting off uh, in the lower lower divisions, lower leagues. Uh, built myself up pretty quickly though and got used to it. Um, so I'm just settling in. Uh, probably this season's probably my strongest season just for getting used to the pace and uh, it's pretty good. Right, so you're 18 now. You're starting to fill out into your body. How? T- what's your what's your kind of what's your stats? How tall are you now? What's your weight? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a six foot and about 86, 87 kilograms. So you're starting to feel nicely into your frame. That's going to go a long part into your game. Obviously, your dad's a big man. Played against him for for many a year. Your brother's a big boy. So you're you're following the family trait. You you know six foot plus, big, heavy. Is that something you plan to utilise in your arsenal, you know, having that size, that strength to be able to take the puck to the net, go to the dirty areas, compete? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I love getting towards the net. I love getting stuck in. Uh, uh, just putting my body on the line, it's pretty It's pretty good. Uh, I, I like to think I'm pretty good at taking the hit and making the play. Uh, just sort of getting the puck in deep, getting get myself into the corner, hit the D-man, get the puck back. Uh, but I also like uh, taking the puck in on my own, using using my long uh, arm span, uh, get those uh, keep, arms out keep that puck away, uh, and just uh, carry it in past D men. So you've 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 kind of played at all levels so far, really. You had your little cup of coffee with the Titans in the NIHL two, then you had some games with the Sims in the NIHL one, and then. You popped over to Leeds for 20 games in the National. And then this year, you, you split the year so far. You played nine games. Blackburn absolutely ran riot. Then went full-time. Uh, no, sorry, this is last year. Uh, you you then split your time with them and mostly with Leeds. And then this time, you've gone black, back to Blackburn, again running riot, and then you joined the Dogs. So you kind of... Already at such a young age, you're doing you're extremely well at uh, NIHL one level. You're starting to cut teeth at uh, national league level. Where do you kind of see how your game's fitting right now at 18? Uh, I'd like to say I'm I'm a solid third line third line player in the national league right now. Uh, it's just uh, getting used to that uh, the man strength really just of other <laughs> other lines you're playing against Ben Ben old guys like Ben Morgan are fucking still <laughs> still on the spin bike at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, he's ridiculous with really. it; he never stops. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, just I like to think I'm I'm a third line guy, and I feel like I can step up and play into higher roles. And I've I saw a show uh, show class uh, that this this season at the start. Uh, filled in on the first second line a few times. Uh, got it's always a, nice got to get reps with the, with the big boys, right? Oh, yeah, I always love lining up. Just that feeling of uh, starting starting on the first line, even if it was just for one, two games, starting starting periods up at this level just gave me such a confidence boost. And now I can showcase what I've got uh, with ice time that's fitting for my age and my skill set at the moment. Uh, and just showing what I can to my coach and uh, teams that might be looking looking for me in the future. So obviously you've done the national one thing in kind of a, a couple of separate stints, but 
Blackburn, you were there last year. You played nine games. Must have enjoyed it enough to go back this year. You played six games. You, you know, you were there only for a cup of coffee, but six goals, ten points, goal a game, over a point and a half a game. You must be happy with the way you performed there. And from everyone I talked to in Blackburn, you seem to fit in very well there and the fans loved you. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved my time at Blackburn. Everyone was just such a nice, like it was just such a nice organization in general. I loved all the players. I actually miss them. I need to need to go see them if I ever get a chance. Um, but yeah, I've just loved my time. I love getting out on the ice and just that ice time that I I'd get while I was there. It was just it improved me so much. And then sort of t- like start of this season, I was sort of going through guys, and I just felt the pace was dropping. I was dropping my pace down a little bit, so. I, Felt like I need to get myself into the National League on a full time basis. Uh, but I had to make sure I was getting that ice time before before I made the move. Is that something you look at? As in, we talk about players playing to their level sometimes, and I've seen guys that have come down to the EPL over the years who were fucking terrible, and then they went back up to the Elite League. And uh, Jeff Hutchins is is the prime example. He came down, he played for Bracknell. He was supposed to dominate. We played against him and it was like, mm, meh. And then he got sacked from the EPR, went back up to, I think, Edinburgh or Hull, and he led the Elite League in scoring that year. And it was yeah. like, what, you're like, what? How in the fuck is that? How has that happened? Like, <laughs> there, there's no logical reason how that guy did it. But, you know, it's horses for courses. And you've kind of cut your teeth at all the levels. You've done NIHL too which is in some part pay to play, which in some part, you know, you guys getting maybe a roll of stick tape and some skate grinds. And, yeah, uh, and in other parts, it's the number one club in town and they're fucking paying guys to be there. I don't know if it's the same up north, but it is down south. Uh, you know, they're selling out arenas because it's the only, it's a, it's the only top team in town. So NIHL two is a free for all. And then you have NIHL one, I know down south, some teams are spending some money and they're making it competitive. I think up north, it's maybe a little bit different, maybe less money orientated than it is down south. But you're still getting some good hockey players running through there. And then finally, you've got the national, which I think is is slowly, slowly eking its way towards what the EPL used to be. And we're starting to get that real competitive nature. With you being like so young, 17, 18, going through this transition, you're getting to kind of compete through all of those. Do you think that's like helped your progress, being able to go extra reps at NIHL 2, then extra reps at NIHL 1, and now you're in the national and you're getting your reps there as well? Oh, massively. That that uh, first season of me playing uh, seniors, I played close to 70 games. I played under-18s. I played NIHL 2, NHL 1, and National League all, all at the same time. I was playing three, four games a weekend, every weekend. Were you, uh, were you paying for your own fuel? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I was going to say you need to get a rocket on that. Yeah, uh, he must have. He must still have a like a, a a petrol deal from when the Steelers were massive in like the nineties. Oh, I wish. I really I wish. Mate, I don't. I don't. I, I, don't I, I don't know if you boys understand how big your old man was like back in the day. Oh yeah. You, you weren't even born yet. Like he was one of my first away heroes. That's weird. And you probably, you boys probably got to get, you, you went to the rink enough, watch your old man play and you watch the other teams and you get the away guy, you go, oh, I fucking like him. I like, yeah. you're not supposed to like the away guy, but I remember your dad came into Bainersloat one night and I think he had a hat trick of slap shots from like the blue line. And I was like, this is mighty duck shit. Like this guy, <laughs> this guy's winding up clappers. And I, I, I remember like, loving him from then, get play against him was awesome. Is there anyone that you remember, like when you were a kid, being at Sheffield, watching the away guy come in, and you just your eyes were drawn to them? Away guys. Um, to be honest, I, I'm not even trying to suck up here, but I'd like used to uh, watch Sheffield Steel Dogs and Hull Pirates, and when uh, Huey was at Hull, yeah, I'd watch I'd watch Huey just the way he moved on the puck. Mate, um, and he's dominated since he come back down. People people questioned Huey when he came down, and um, he shoved it up the hoop real quick. Yeah, but real really really quick. 
And then it was like, oh, yeah, it was one year. He got 109 points. And then, like, the next year, he got, like, 126 points. Yeah. It's like, okay, fuck you guys. Yeah, uh, not just one. Yeah, it's not just one. And the best thing about Huey, uh, I'm sure you can attest to this, being a new guy, young guy on, on the roster, he's the best guy. Yeah, he's he's, he's very right. He's just the best guy, yeah. So when you come into his like, circle, into that family, into that Steel Dogs family, even now it's changed. I know Ali Cree's gone, and that is a massive that's a massive hole in, in the organisation. But that is some of the tightest group of boys that I've ever met in my hockey lifetime. And you, yeah, you've it's, come into that. Yeah, it's incredibly close. I came in thinking I already knew how close all the Steel Dogs lot were. I didn't I didn't know quite where how I'd join in with it with them already being so tight knitted, but walked in. I wasn't even signed yet. I was just training in the summer with them and uh, I was already in before I'd even walked in the locker room. I, I was talking to all of them on the way in and Sat down in the store, was given everything I needed. Talking to anyone and everyone, everyone was happy to chat. And you don't re- you don't really see that uh that much, but just that group of lads is you just instantly come they're, they're instantly your mates. Like it's not just well, you've teammates. You've got fucking donkeys there. like Chaz Thompson and Jack Brammer <laughs> on your on your lineup. Um, by the way, two of my favorite human beings in the they're national, great. Love in it. national league. What's it like having, obviously, because you've got the old boys, right? Yeah, I've got the old boys. You've got the Morgs, you've got the Smithies, you've got the Bellies, the Haywards, the Zs. You've got all the old dogs. But then you've got some of the other younger guys who might still want to, you know, play the practical jokes and have the fuck around and have the fun time. You've got your Chazzes, you've got Jack and everybody to keep it loose. What's it like, like just being able to be around those boys? Because for me, that's, that's when people go, do you miss it? You miss the donkeys in the room and you're going, well, Tuesday night now, I'm sat at home, like, waiting for my kid to jump off the sideboard onto the concrete. And I'm going, oh, yeah. you can't take a minute off. I used to be, like, waiting for one of these donkeys to do something in the locker room that would make my week. You you get that on a regular. What's it like having those fun lads around? Oh, it's great. And you say about the old guys, but they're joining in just as much still. Uh, they they ain't done yet. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's just great. Like, just just a big fuck around and it's sick. Uh, but you've also got that element of as soon as you step on the ice, like it is it's they're 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 always ready to play. Uh, they'll they'll throw absolutely everything at it, and then you get back in the changing room, it's it's laughs again, and they they can just flip that switch so quickly. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? and uh, that that's that veteran thing that happens over time, and it's something you will learn over years. And you might look back on this conversation and I just laugh because you're the rook, and it fucking go. Hey, mate, it go. Enjoy being the rook because it goes away real quick, and then it's finished. Yeah, I should, I should add, it's there and then it's gone. It might be ten years for some, might be five years, might be twenty years. But whether it's five, ten, or twenty, it's fucking. It's like that, and it's it's a way. I can't explain it. To, it's the one thing my dad used to say to me. Yeah, uh, you remember you're young, and you're like, yeah, all right, old man, all right, old man, all right, yeah, 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 all right, yeah. He, he always used to say, "You're a long time retired, and enjoy it while it's there because it's not there forever." So yeah, because I didn't know any different. I put hockey skates on when I was six. And then you just go through and you just just assume that's what it is. That That's just what it is. And he said, you're a long time retired and enjoy it. And now that I've been out of it, like playing side for nearly 10 years. Yeah. Just encourage you guys, just to enjoy it as much as you can. The road trips I bitched about that I'm like, mate, I don't miss blocking shots, getting hit in the fucking face with sticks, having to fight big, scary fucking mutants that punch your fucking face in. Do I miss that? Yeah, maybe a little bit. You know, Secret Santa gift time going around the room. Oh my god! Do you miss that? Yeah. Like, uh, do I miss playing snaps on the road? Yeah. Do I miss having the fucking double header away where you've got like two guys to a room, but it's fucking eighteen guys to one room? Yeah. Like, I miss that so much. The game, I don't know. I, I I feel like the game's changed loads. 
I don't know how much you remember from watching like your dad play. And then like even when it's not your dad, once he was completely done, the kind of next generation that came through to how the game is now just feels very different. Does it feel different from the game that you grew up watching? Yeah, massively. Like you you don't notice it uh, until you're playing in it, but like the the fact there's no enforcers in the league and there's no like you don't see the most skillful guy go out uh, on the um, on the ice with just some big brute of a guy just there to protect him. Someone like, um, like imagine someone doing the uh, fucking Michigan when Dennis Vial was on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna happen. Yes, yeah, stick to the mouth. Well, it, it'd be one of them. It's like you do that, but it's your funeral, guy. Okay? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and by the way, let me just tell you. As much as ESPN and TSN love it on the highlighted package, none of your teammates are jumping in to fight Dennis Vial for you. No. <laughs> not no. one of them. Not one of them. Him. Not one of them jumping in to go, hey, buddy, imagine you did that when Dennis Vial was on the ice. Oh, my God. The carnage that would ensue, especially now in UK hockey. Can you imagine, imagine like the, you go on to hockey Twitter Sunday night and the wheels are just well and truly... Falling off, like everybody would be in meltdown. They would be calling for nine hundred games. It's just, oh man, this is what I kind of feel for you guys a little bit because you grew up watching this brand of hockey, and you grew up wanting to aspire to be the, these hockey players. Uh, I don't feel like you're being given the chance to really represent what you're about. Like, you just said you're eighteen years old. You're six, six, six one, eight six kilos. You're gonna be fucking 95, 96 kilos. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you're gonna be yeah. a big hockey player, which 10 years ago, man, everyone would have been like <laughs> making it fucking rain for you right now. Like, they would. And I, I, I don't wanna see us get away from that because there's nothing better than a blue nose. Hard working, hard hitting, goal scoring, face off winning, body checking, four checking, back checking, motherfucking Brit. Give me, that's what I pay my money to go watch. I don't need to watch a guy from U Sports. Yeah, like, but I, I think I want to see I guys think, like you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, my brother's actually done quite well for himself with his size. Like, my he's six three. He's like six six on skates. He's yeah, by like the way, 90, that's a joke. <laughs> that's like a joke. <laughs> ninety four, ninety five kg, whatever like that. Like he's a big guy, and he's instead of people wanting him to go out there and fight, he's going out in there and he's shooting the puck like a wrist shot at like whatever mile an hour. It's just stupid. A goalie can't even see it, mm. and he's he's making his like mark by being a power forward in that mark, and his his face offs are ridiculous. He can play D. As well, yeah, what's, what, what's this? I'm catching up on the latest, and I'm seeing Cole playing D. I'm like, okay, I like the fact you're giving him reps, but I would <laughs> much rather you gave him reps in forward. And oh yeah, is this right? You're you're a young guy, and don't answer this if you don't have to. I don't I don't want to get you in trouble by any stretch of the imagination. For me, it's frustrating. I don't see fucking Cole playing D. I know he can play D. Great. I'm happy you can play D. Give me that in year fucking six of his career. Right now, give the guy some reps on forward. He can score goals, man. Like, the kid can score. Give him some fucking reps. So what I ask, and I know that's hard because that's your brother, but I'll take it out. Josh Waller, give him more reps. Whoever it is, you know, these young British guys that do have talent, Give them the same reps you give the inputs. Give them the same reps. And let's see how the reward matches up. Because until you do that, if you're giving the, the British guys a negative rep range versus the imported guys, well, the, the results are always going to be that. If you give yeah. them the same, hey, who knows? Be the guy, be the coach, be the GM that has the fucking minerals to go out and be that guy because it'll make a difference to your organization. Because when you find that one guy, that Robert Downs, that Ben O'Connor, that Ben Bounce, you're going to find a guy. But the only way you're going to find a guy, how Seahawks, Stingrays, I believe, actually, 
took a risk on Ben Bounds. You know, these teams have taken a risk and done it. You have to do it. You have to do it. And if you're Sheffield Steelers losing Jonathan Phillips, Alex Graham sadly passed, now's the time to, to, to take your chance on these Brits. You have a fantastic roster, arguably the best roster in the Elite League. Yeah. In my opinion, it would be the time to do it. And it, I don't know how you young Brits feel because I know how easy, like, you got a good job, Tate. Like, I'm really actually surprised by your job. You're, you're there, you're doing the boarding school thing. How easy is it just to just go down that route and become a career guy? Go, look, I've got a really good job. I enjoy my job. I get just as much as this from what I do from hockey. And you just, all of a sudden, the elite league becomes a by thought sh- at the age of 18. Like, and they're not trying to draw you back in to be like, hey, if you come here, we'll pay for you to get your master's. We'll we'll do this and we'll make it worth your while. Like, it's it's massive, really. Uh, like I'm I'm already thinking about my future and my career. Uh, like I'm, after this year where I'm working, Rambi, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to uni. Uh, so whether I get offered the chance to go play for Steelers and if I tell them, well, I'm going to uni, what can you do for me there? And they say, well, I can't do much. You have to be in training four times a week. But if you can't, then can't have you. And I'll say, that's fine. I'm going to uni. I'll play for dogs. Yeah. I'll see you. See how my game progresses. I'll see you in three years. I, but that's smart, I'll see, mate. See that's smart. Look at me in three years. Because we've seen, Tate, we've seen this over the years. And what I've never got, right? We pay for these guys that have already been to U Sports to come over and complete their fucking masters over here. And I'm like, give guys like you a job. Give you a four year degree. Mate, that saves you 50 grand. Yeah. You ain't getting paid shit. Let me tell you that. You're getting paid fuck all, bro. Enjoy it. Enjoy getting paid nothing because you're getting paid nothing. But you get a 50, 50 grand degree out of it, you can go, I can wear that. <laughs> like, you, you right. go, I, I can wear that. That's all right. I, I'm going to leave here at 22 and I might leave the Steelers and sign for Belfast. But I have a four year degree and now Belfast is going to pay me real money. And then all of a sudden you get, and then it becomes worth it. But the thing is, that four years where the Elite League won't pay you, the National League will. So everyone bitching at Liam. Obviously, I, I, I know your sister dates Liam, but he's one of the best talents in the country. He's not going there for fucking peanuts as playing the fourth line when he could have an actual career and a, it's a job at Leeds. He's the face of the organisation and he's doing a great job. Yeah, he's Kieran. He's doing sick for himself. Uh, you have to give it to him, like what he's done at at Leeds. To be honest, like just the way he came up, like he went to Leeds. He wasn't really given the opportunity, so he took it upon himself. Like it's hard being so young, already getting up there. Like you've proven you can play in that league. He's he scored in that league. At Expectation 16. level, by the way, as well compared to every compared to everybody else, the expectation level on Kieran Brown. Is fucking here where to everybody else it's here. Like, oh, we yeah, expect like, Kieran to score 50 goals. If he doesn't, it's a bad year. Yeah, he, if he doesn't get 50, 60 goals this year, people will say he's he's not ready for the elite league. What all this? Like, like, is, like are you yeah, joking? My, fa- my favorite one with that is is when then guys that step up that have got 11, but a lot of role players, yeah. and they go, oh, oh, yeah, great. They're so good for the elite league. I'm like, you have scored fucking 75 more points than them. And you won't... Ex- I don't know what it is. They're butthurt, mate. They won't accept this kid as a good hockey player. Yeah. I, like- I've had arguments. I, and I try not to argue, Tate, on Twitter. I try not to. So I put my point out there. Leave it there. The Kieran Browns are one that gets me in the fucking most arguments. Because I'm like, you fucking idiots don't know. <laughs> when was the last time you saw him play? Oh, I've never saw him play. Shut the fuck up, then, you donkeys. Like, what do you mean you've never seen him play? How are you having a judgment on this boy? He is good. Or they go, well, I saw him play when he played when he played with the Steelers. Oh, yeah. Oh, what, when he played fucking three shifts out of 16? 16. <laughs> yeah, when he was 16, yeah. Yeah, real good judgment. Like, 
we need to do more to nurture the talent. I personally think I would love to see Kieran go to Europe. I like I I think it's a better suited angle to his game. You get paid way more fucking money, and he has no pressure on him. Like he could just go out and light lamps, and everyone would be like, "Oh my god, you give this guy the fucking slot, he's gonna score a goal." Oh yeah, he'll he'll score like ninety nine percent ninety nine percent of the time. Like sure. I've played, I've played with him, I've played against him now, and like. The way he moves on the on the ice is not th- like nothing you've ever seen before, and he's not he's not the tallest of guys, but he's he's built like he's he's rangy, mate. He's rangy on his stick. Like he's oh yeah, he's got a great stick. He's got like his hockey IQ is on point. Like yeah. people like that need to be playing second first, like second line in, in the elite league, not first line in national league. Like. And people argue, right? They're, they're bitching at him. They're going, "What? Why would uh, he should go to the elite? He's a big, big fish in a small pond." I'm like, right, literally, okay. uh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, fuck you, because you know fuck all. And B, what you're gonna take a pay cut to go play less ice time on a team that's not gonna win shit or go to edit, or he could make more money. Play every scenario and win a trophy. Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. What am I going to do? Like, don't take the piss out of the boy. Ring him up, make him an offer he can't fucking refuse. Let's say, for argument's sake, and this is literal argument's sake, no factual numbers. Let's say he's on 750 in leagues, right? You're not in the Panthers, ring him up and offer him a grand. Right, there's a money aspect gone. You're also not in the Panthers, so you can offer him the fact that, hey, this is our plan. We plan to be competitive. We want to be back in the title challenge. We're going to spend X. We're going to bring in X as coach. We're going to do this. Okay, so now you can give him the challenge of that. Do you know what I mean? Like, make it worth it for these fucking British guys. Yeah. Why would they leave? Why would they leave? Right, if Kieran wanted to, he could then go out and get a job forty hours a week. Yeah, literally, like he could be making. I, I, I Eight, don't actually. Mate. Him, but yeah. I don't oh, know by the way, purely he's... hypothetical. My 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 figures. Yeah, I I have no clue what he's making a making at Leeds, and uh, he could he can still go out and get a job and work Monday through Friday, and then go to training Thursday, Thursday Friday. Yeah, and no problem. Like there's like there's no issue for him there, and he can be making double what people are in the elite league while getting triple the amount of ice time they are, yeah. scoring a hundred more points than them. Yeah. Like maybe I, he may I, be I don't think people understand but... that he's not a mug. No talent. Ta- I I this is what I said to, in a tweet the other day to one of these fucking guys that think that. They're a fucking game analysis because they got 12 followers on fucking Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. They're like, hey, I'm a, I'm a game analysis. I, I watch games from Russia. But yeah, good for you, bud. Don't make game analysis. Anyway, they, they tell me the reasons why Kira's, Kira's not good enough. I'm not like, okay. Okay. Well, I just you, say, go you, watch you, 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 keep, you keep telling me this shit and I'm just like, okay, you fucking pigeon. You have no idea. Kieran Brown could play in any fucking league on a planet he wanted to play in. Yeah. If he just decided that's what he was going to do. Because he has talent, and talent is what it is. You've got um, you've got what I would describe as a game that's suited for the National League. Points, not transition this year. Something you're disappointed with so far, or... Are you just waiting to get that breakthrough where you start eating some more reps, you start eating some more minutes? You know what it's like. You get a fucking a little break on a PP one day or whatever it is, puck goes off your ass, and then here come the points because you've shown at every level you play that the points are there, and I don't think anyone is in any doubt that the points are coming with the Steel Dogs right now. Well, I've uh, been pushed out of a few assists this uh, this season already. <laughs> <She's> all. <laughs> Is that Chaz by any? Is that Chaz by any stretch? Fuck sake, Chaz. Give the kids a break. <laughs> to be honest, he got chiseled out of one as well. Uh, I guess Paul. 
scored. I think we scored the game winner, to be honest. Uh, and he got chills out of the out the points with me. Uh, but yeah, um, just wait. I'm just waiting for it. Waiting for that chance to. I got. I've had a few chances where I'm like, shit, I can't. I want that back. Like, if I could get that back, I might have made that pass across, or I might have taken that shot. That's good that the brain's thinking like that, though, mate. That right. that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But, I've I've noticed how much I've improved uh, coming to Sheffield already, just because I'm listening. I'm listening to guys like guys are taking the time on me, like play like I've got players like uh, Jonathan Phillips, Jason Hewitt, Biz Biz. And that. Right, okay. Uh, I was just about to ask, right? So, for the people that don't fucking get it, yeah, for the the just the the, the Joe average fucking fan that watches an NHL game three times a year. How fucking good is Biz? He's ridiculous. Like, like, how good is he? How good is his dish? He has the sickest fucking no look dish in the league. He's like an eighty foot pass to Tate every time, guy. It's ridiculous. Like he, people who don't actually watch hockey, or don't watch this league. Like they look at Biz and like, oh, he's he's not the fastest skater. Like his hands, his hands are good. He's got a good shot, but that's about it. He's but fucking... watching him from the bench, you'll look at him and. He'll all he'll do is step to the left and he'll make ten feet of space for himself, get the puck, dish a sauce across to the back door, and everyone on the bench is just like, "Fuck off!" Like, biz. yeah, like, that's just fucking, a joke, just like, fucking ridiculous. The only person I've seen with his vision, and this is gonna be a massive compliment, and you get at me in the fucking Twitter at right below right now if you disagree. YouTube comments if you disagree. I'm in Tony Hand. I haven't seen a guy fucking pass a puck like him. Like, I genuinely haven't. I haven't seen a guy that could look this way and hit that guy over there that's like 30 degrees behind him. <laughs> but he never turned his head once, tape to tape. Just, he knows where people are. It's disgusting. Like, you think as a D man, oh, I've got this guy. And then Biz just puts the puck the other side of you. And he's so good at it. And I don't understand people that slag him off. Oh, he's terrible import. Why? Because he doesn't wheel past people and go coast to coast. I think you're watching the wrong fucking game, my friend. Yeah. So you, you need to watch this guy. He's a cretin. Like he will ruin. It. He, he will like get into the woodwork. He will get under. The, he'll get under the panels. He'll do shit that you don't notice he's doing until he's done it. And then you go. He got two plus three tonight. You go. What the fuck did that happen? You got five <laughs> points. So you got a what? How do you get five points? They even notice him. Yeah, because you notice the import skates up and down. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Three hundred mile an hour. Zero plus one. Yeah, you got a guy like Biz who's just putting it on a fucking needle for like the boys you're talking about, Jonathan Phillips, Jason Hewitt. Like you, you put the puck on a needle for these boys. They're putting it in the back of the net. Yeah, like he. He just does what most people can't. Like he's got the the game sense of a fucking NHL player in an NHL league. Like, yeah, that's a really good analogy, it's, mate. Really, it's just analogy. fucking stupid the way the way he thinks. Like, and he thinks so out of the box. Like, he'll, he'll look at a pass where there's three guys in the way, four sticks, seven pairs, seven pairs of legs, and he'll put the puck through the, the one gap that you'd never imagine and put it straight on the guy's tape. Yeah, it's like amazing. who else is making that pass? Like everyone else is just turn it, like turn around, pass it to your D. Just a savage, mate. Not this. Uh, Not this. When, when when you guys, as young guys, you you you've done the national one thing, and you get you start to cut your teeth. But now you come into this the national league. It's a strong league, and it it's growing all the time. The league getting better. What do you what do you class as a successful season for yourself? Like obviously one point for you is not in my opinion, it's not good enough. Like you're no. you're a fucking stud. And we know that no, but mate, we know when you get your reps, when you get your reps, you're gonna get your fucking points. Points gonna come. But I also know as a young British guy that's trying to make his way, we have these things in our brain. There's numbers and reps and where do you see you and where do you see you going in the next, like, you know, 12, 18 months here? To be honest, I just, like, 
I, I don't really give a fuck about my own numbers. Like, I'm I'm a team guy all the way. I, I'm not even just saying that to like yeah, that's awesome, mate. Curve, I'd love to hear that. I just want I want my team. Like we've not had the strongest start to a season. Let's be realistic. Like uh, we we I want to finish in the top four. Like whether I get I feel if I've only got one point at the end of the season, I've had my one point, or I've got thirty. Like, I've either way I've contributed because I know when my line goes out, we've always been the line to go on before a goal scored. Like we've set the tempo to get that goal scored because we've gotten in. We've we've we're playing against the first line. Mate, of every but the thing line. is, like for a guy like me that knows the game, I can appreciate the fuck out of that because I I've been that guy. I've been the guy that's, you know, you get drawn against the first line away from home, and that's your that's your third line. That's your job. So yeah, I can score a goal, but that that wasn't my job that day. My job that day was to make you fucking hate playing ice hockey. It's just, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, pretty much. I, like, I, I want to make you fucking not enjoy playing ice hockey anymore. I'm going to make it miserable. So at the end of the game, you go, oh, that's the best shower I've ever had. I just want to get in my kit, get in my tracksuit, get on the bus and fucking go home because I want to yeah. make it that sad for you. That's a role that's just as important that the fans don't understand, I don't think. No one, No one understands how fucking hard that role is. It's de- I think it's harder it's than a goal scorer, to be honest. Way harder, mate. Way harder. Because you have to sacrifice. Because maybe yeah. on the goal scoring line, you chip that puck off the wall, you take the fucking gamble, you go down two on one, you fake the fucking pass, you go short, short side shelf, you do whatever. On that line, you're like, the puck goes out, you get to the fucking red, that puck goes in, you get the fuck off the ice. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That that is it. That, that you've done your job. You you've you've gassed that fucking line, you made them skate out 35, 45 seconds. Now your first line gets to go on against their third line, whether it be the next shift or the shift after. But you've done your job. And if the, your first line score, this is again the, the game within the game that the fans don't see. If your first line then score, your job just become fucking woofoosh. Yeah. You're like massive that role that you just played within that goal. I think you only know that if you're in that 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 little click that's going on in that moment of a sports sports game, like yeah, like to be honest, I'm I've been playing uh, centre this this year, but I've I've not. I'll be fair to myself. I've not won many face offs uh, as I've liked to like as I'd like to, but every single time I'm looking across against people coming out against them, like I've got a fucking take face off against their first line guy every single time. Like like okay. I'll have I'll have okay. twelve shifts and I'll have fifteen, sixteen face offs and I'll be against the the top line guy every single time. And uh, like I'll get I'll get a few, I'll get a few. I'll I'll sneak a few but my job is like right, I'm sending someone straight through to the puck regardless. You, you, you I'm tying to, my guy up. You have to you have to change your, your view of face offs. So I, if you ask anybody when I played, I was running at like seventy percent my whole career. Like I'm fucking the Matty Matty Myers of the EPL when it comes to faceoffs. But it was something that I prided myself on, and yeah. I, like I was like, I don't want to lose a faceoff. I'd be coming into put it this way: this is when in my career that I I knew my faceoffs were legit. Obviously, on teams where I was one of the more senior guys, I was obviously going to take the draws late in games. But then when I went to Guildford, my last year of my career, and they were taking the imports off and putting me on for like a draw with three seconds left. Because I was running at like yeah. 70... I ran at like 72% in Guildford. Like, it was a sick joke. Oh, that's ridiculous. A sick joke. But it was... What that allows, it allows you to set up any defensive play you want. And it pretty much allows you to set up any offensive play you, you ever want to do. Yeah. On the rare occasion that you fucking lose one, you know how to tie up. But all of a sudden, now you only have to tie up two, three, and ten. Yeah. As opposed to, like, tying up when you win versus tying up when you lose is completely different. Like, tying up when you lose, you've got to get in there and try and win that puck still. Tying up when you win, I'm just... You're just I'm just getting in your way, mate. Like I'm giving my D man an extra second. 
But yeah. when it's a battle for the park, it's completely different. And if a if a young guy like you can bring like I, I don't think there's enough people that have pride in the sentiment game anymore. Like pride in fucking like not losing a draw. Like I I'd be mad if I lost the face off. Like fucking mad. Unbearable. My ex misses at time. Like, What's your problem? You won six five. I was like, Yeah, I lost six draws tonight. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> She'd be like, What are you talking about? You psycho. Yeah. But it was real. Like I didn't want to lose any face offs. No, I know exactly where you're coming from. Like, I, I fucking hate it when I lose a face off. And I'm like, I'm saying like 40, 50% a game. And I just look at it every night. And I'm like, fuck, like, fuck's sake. It'll come like, up, mate. It'll come up. It'll, it'll get there, but it's just annoying. But all I, all I know is like, I've got Brady Doxy and I've got Jack Brown on my line. If one of them's not, like, one of them's going through fucking nailing the D man, yeah. like, that's not. Like, you got I know, two crash test stuff. dummies on your line right there. <laughs> yeah. And like even if if it's an offensive face off, like if I manage to win that put back, I've got two crash test dummies going straight to the fucking net. Like if it's, it. if it's a D zone draw and I've won it, I've got like two smart players that know where they're going, know what they're running at all times, and they run it perfectly, we get the puck out, make a hit, get a shot on net, get off. Yeah. Next next line goes out. It's the right. thing that I pride one of my... There's a couple of things I pride in my game on. Obviously, looking after the teammates, clear as day was one of them, but it was stupid shit. I like, never lose a draw. If you, like, I try never lose a draw or win every battle in front. Like, I was always in front of the PP. We had a conversation today with somebody. I said that, yeah, I was in Brighton. I scored 16 goals on a power play. Yeah, like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and they were just from in front. But if you're willing to go there, I'm like, I can't remember the last time I saw anybody just just go get this shit kicked out of your boys. It's not that fucking hard. Like it it sucks. It sucks and it'll suck when you get 37. Trust me. <laughs> it'll suck when you get 37. But at the time, if you can be in that house area, you got a chance to score a goal. A oh yeah. Shots on the arm, a couple of fucking cross checks in the back. Deal with it. I'm not seeing when I go to games now, I'm not seeing enough guys go into just the simple areas to score goals. The ugly areas. It sucks. It fucking sucks. You get cross checked, you get staked, you get hit with pucks, mainly by your own guys, mainly on the power play. Yeah. It sucks. But every now and again, one of them puppies just fall right in front of that empty net. Guess yeah. What? I know. And guess I know what? You, you get to be the guy that puts that puck in the net. Yeah. I, I, one thing I, I definitely need to improve on is recognizing when to like i'm all good to get in front of the net i don't care i'll get in that area but it's the right timing of getting in that area like i need to like normally i'm the guy who cycles the puck up to the d like makes a play in the corner i need to recognize that i can't just stand in the corner and wait for the puck to come back to me because it's not i need to fucking get to the net i need to like stand on the back door and just wait the thing is you have skill yeah so you can do all the bullshit that fucking gets to get up to the just go into the net and be in there. You don't need any skill to do that. Like, yeah. literally, none. And this is what the fucking thing that kills me about the British game and the junior game. You don't need any skill to do that, boys. Just get your no. fucking ass to the net and sacrifice your body a little bit. And guess what? You gotta get to whack some pucks into some empty nets because goalies can't get okay. to every goalies can't get to them all. They, it's just it's just that simple. The, Unless you're a Kieran, and then you're going to pull the pants down, smash them, top top shelf, five hole, low blocker, wherever you want to do it. But for the rest of us, if we're just in the house, hey, if you're in the house eating, everyone's getting some food. And you just don't know what days you're going to be your day. It might be the fucking playoff semifinal. It might be the playoff final. It might be the game that gets you to the playoffs. But yeah. it's just that one day that you're there where you're supposed to be doesn't it doesn't even require talent, I don't think, Tate. I think no, it requires no. just like dedication and willing to have some fucking balls about you and go to the shitty areas and just be a good team guy. Like a good team guy goes to the shit areas. Yeah. And as, yeah. as a young guy, the fact that you're willing to do that is great. Like, yeah, I, I know what you mean. And like even when you say about Kieran, like 
pulling people's pants down. Yeah, yeah, he can do that. But the amount of times last season, and I just watched Kieran just go to the net and put 15 in. Yeah. Probably put 15 in just by putting a rebound or a tip or anything like that. From this this far away. Yeah, like he was literally just stood on top of the goalie's crease and you just tip it in. Like, get, if guys like that are doing it, it literally just shows you, like, there's a reason why they're doing it. Like, there, there's a reason why they're successful in their career so young like they're they're doing everything right and it's just watching them players that makes you realize like this is what i need to do to get to that next step like i need to ask that person to do this like i'm one game one part of my game that i really want to get better at is a uh, penalty kill and the one person yeah. i've been watching on dogs recently is jonathan, jonathan phillips yeah. straight up like he's i mean he's, if you're going to watch if you're going to watch anybody mate What's Jonah? Yeah, and um, he's like a uh, PK the OG. constantly. <laughs> the OG PK, yeah. OG PK King. Literally, like I, every single time they practice power play on on um, uh, training, they'll be like, "Oh, who like power play one go down there, power play two go down there," and I'm like, "Well, I'm I'm going to power play one. Like, I'm I'm not coming out either. Like, I don't care how many kids, like shit kids, are on on the training, like." They can sit on the bench. I'm I'm practicing my penalty kill, yeah. and every time the puck's down the other end, I'm asking Jono, "What do I do? Is this right? Am I doing this? Yeah. Like, how do I push learning. this guy down? Like, how, where's where's the best what spot for me? What a good guy to, to learn from, though. Oh yeah, it's sick. I've I've gotten from like really lucky with the guys I've gotten to learn from. Like at Leeds, I had uh, Matt Haywood, I had Kieran, yeah. my brother. Like I had all them guys to learn from. Like Sammy Your Zager. brother was a joke at that level. Yeah, he was just fucking stupid. Probably the best best power forward in 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 the league. That I, I, I want to see him get more fucking nasty though. Obviously, yeah, and to oh, be honest, oh, obviously, me being me is is going to sit here and say I want to see a bit more nastiness. But he's got the rest of it. In terms of power forward, he's got eighty five percent of it. I just need to see the more Brendan Shanahan fucking. A bit more of the, you know, a bit more of the nastiness to be a class of pure like Eric Lindros power forward. Skill wise, size wise, everything else, he's got it. I just wanted a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more like, I'm going to make you hate playing against me. Like, yeah, yeah I can score, but you don't want to go in a corner against me because I'll bruise your ribs and I'll fucking bust your shoulder out of the socket because every time I'm going to run you through the boards. When I see that from Cole, he's the full player for me. Like to be honest, I'll I'll give it him. Like he will get in the corner. He won't go in and like try to fucking kill someone. Like he'll go in. He'll push them off the puck because he's six foot six on skates, That's and he'll just. <laughs> like, it does. He, he doesn't have to put his like. He doesn't need to put a guy through the boards. Like he'll yeah, just. Yeah, I would love it though. I just with one I finger. Just, I would love him just to do it more. Oh yeah, me too. I, I just think it he, gives him more. Like it, it gives him more space, and it gives him that just that range to then utilize his skill talent and his, yeah. his level, his hands, and his fucking vision. I'll be honest, as his as his brother, like when I played against, like played with him at Leeds in training, I'd every time it was a corner battle, I'd look for Cole. Uh, I'd yeah. I'd go against Cole. <laughs> but yeah, Cole, where are you? Because. Yeah. As a brother, he he's just not the type of brother to be like, oh, you know what, like we'll go a bit easy on him. Nah, he's going 100, 130, 140 percent against me. Throws me against the boards, like and like I'm just like two yeah, anti him in his chins, and yeah. like I was just like we love we love each other, and that's why we do it because we'll we know we're gonna get better off of each other, and that's why exactly why we do it, mate. Um, if. If anyone was to go through the game tape of me and my brother, so <laughs> you go Caroline and Graham's front room circa 90, 98, and you will see the sofa pulled forward about four feet. And the rule was you have to run down the living room, uh, run down the <laughs> corridor into the living room. And it's who could hit check each other over the back, into the wall, down the back of the sofa to clean us. That was the game. And then yeah. when that wasn't the game anymore, it was out in the street to see who could throw the best toe to toe after watching that Don Cherry Rock'em Sock'em Six. Yeah. Fucking street. It's just been, uh, uh. 
But as it got later on and we got closer to I'd have been fucked at 17, I was already playing League League, Ryan's was 14, trying to make it. It was legit. Like after practice, tying up, throwing, learning, ducking, moving. Like, and everyone would be like, oh my God, that guy had a fucking fight in the Elite League at 17. Yeah, it was an accident, mate. <laughs> like, <laughs> it wasn't an accident that that happened. That was. Everything that you didn't see that we did behind yeah. the scenes to get to where we got to, you didn't see. You didn't see any of that. And you and your brother obviously go through that and you share that in common. But your games are very different. And I'm excited by your game. Are we going to see you line up for GB at any point? Uh, well, I played uh, GB 20s uh, last year. I didn't. I didn't uh, get too much uh, ice time and uh, didn't, I didn't get selected this time. I'm on the reserves, but... Um, that surprised like, you, though. Like, I, it surprised me, too, to be honest. Like, I don't know why. Dis- I disappointed? It. Yeah, massively. Like, I'm disappointed, but to be honest, all I've got to do is take it, take it on the chin, use it, go back out. Like, and it did shock me because uh, e- even, like... You feel like played... you do a better job than some of the guys out there, right? Oh yeah, I think I could do better than four or five of them that are on there. And I do as well, uh, mate. To be like, like I played against Martin, uh, the coach of GB. I played against Solway literally three day, two days before, sc- and scored against him. I was playing first line at the time, like because uh, some some people were out um, injured. And I was playing first line. I scored against him. Went down. I was. Uh, Taking on his D men, all his D men. I, I walked at least once and nailed all his D men. Like I nailed all his forwards. Like, I got in the scraps. Like I don't think I could have shown showcased my skill any better in an actual game. It just wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough for him. And then I go to the trainings. And to be honest, like I didn't have a suit, like a, an outstanding uh, trial, like that. Like those two I days, fucking I hate the trial process, mate. I think it's well, I fucking hate it. It's completely. I think different. it's a terrible way of judging talent, like, and that's the story for another podcast. And it's not one I'm going to drag you into and get you in fucking <laughs> trouble. It's not one I'm going to drag you into and get you in trouble with. But it's refreshing to hear a player say it though, because me saying it as an ex player, yeah, that's fine. It's just a fucking terrible way of judging ice hockey players. Like it really is. Yeah. You don't know shit about them. It's awful. I've been a coach of that. I've done it. It's the worst. Yeah. It's the fucking worst. I try all these guys. I'm like, oh my God, this guy looks like Sidney Crosby. And I put him in a challenge game against the B team. And he looks like a fucking wreck guy. You're like. Yeah. But it's, it's completely not, different. It's even not the same. Even the trials again, like where you're playing a game in the trials, oh, like it's, it's bottom, everyone's man. just going like 130. It's, it's half a, it's half eleven at night. <laughs> You've been at college or work all day. It's just a it's a nonsense procedure. Yeah. Um, Tate, I'm gonna let you go in a second. I just want to ask you a couple more questions. Yeah. The the dogs under new ownership. Obviously, it's a bit different for you because you're just new this year. But with the new ownership, the change to colours, they have created a pathway to the Steelers. Obviously, your brother's there. Is that something you'd like to follow in the future? In the future, yeah. Like it's, I don't think it's in my near future. I don't think it's like next year, even two years. Like no rush. But like, I'm I'm not in a rush to get up there. Like I'm gonna take my time. Like build my game, get more ice time in this league. Right, lad. If if I have to drop down, like. I'll, I'll, I don't care if it's giving me 40 minutes of ice time like it was at Blackburn. I'm fucking taking it. But right now I'm getting 15 to 20 minutes of ice time a game at Still Dog. So why would I say no to that? Yeah, like, I'm get I'm put on the PK like roster. Like I'm on the uh, list for people going out next and uh, power play. I'm like I'm, if someone's hurt, I'm I'm straight out. If someone's That's like, good, That's good. like I'm I'm in there. I know I'm in there, and I know. Uh, the dogs know what I can do, so I'm I'm happy to stay there. I'll I'll stay there as long as it takes me, and when I think I'm ready and if I'm getting offers, then I'll go myself. Like I'm not letting anyone decide for me that I'm going, and I'm not using, right. like especially for me with my dad and my brother, I'm not using anyone else's fucking legacy no, to get myself that. into a team. Like I don't care about that. Like I really no, I don't. don't. Like 
what my what my dad did was great. What my brother's doing is great. Like I don't care. I really. Right, don't by care. the way, though, if you ever fancy and fancy yourself, think you're tough. Go out in the fucking street and let your old man hit you with a clapper in the knee. Come back in and tell me how that feels because I felt that. <laughs> let me tell you, that shit fucking sucks. To mate, be honest, I've had one before when I was oh, like fourteen. <laughs> mate, he hit me on the inside of the knee and I shit feel one oh. day, and I was just like, "Do you know what? all the all the oxygen kind of leaves your body up?" <laughs> And I yeah. didn't know what to do because I had no oxygen inside me. I was just like stood on the blue line, like, oh my god, that hurt <laughs> that hurt so bad. But no, all right, Tate, this has been so much fun. You're a smart kid, you got your head screwed on. I wish you um all the very best for the future. Hope you kill it this year with the dogs. Let's uh let's hope you carry on your off ice career, smash that, and then Hopefully we see you in the elite league. You know, once you've done your studies and you've done it the smart way, I, I appreciate what you're doing, mate. I think it's a smart way of doing it. No, thank you very much for having me on. It's been great. Love Any, to chat. Anytime, my friend. All right, Tate, thank you very much, my brother. Ladies and gents, subscribe, like, comment, share, do all the usual YouTube mumbo jumbo. Road trip and episode five is coming up. Episode six coming up. You got a back to back one on that, and then we'll be seeing you again very soon as we take on SC Burn. We go to Malmo in Sweden and Copenhagen in the Danish league. But for now, I mean, what it, this has been four thousand counting. That's been Tate. We will see you again very very soon. Peace. <laughs>